Hey, AP Euro students, we're going to get into absolutism and constitutionalism next, uh, which is chapter 16. And a couple things we got to make sure we're on the same page as an introduction. First of all, what those two terms mean and why do they show up uh, when they do? So first, if you look at the picture, uh, that's actually King Louis the 14th in the middle, who we'll spend a lot more time on as this section goes on. Uh, but notice, obviously, being at the center of the painting is important. Church leaders, nobles, kind of uh, bowing, paying homage around them, even maybe some mythical god-type creatures or, and figures up top here. Uh, and he's the center, right? And that's intentional because under absolutism, as we'll find out, uh, these rulers have what it sounds like, absolute control. And hopefully as we go through this section and unit, this picture makes a lot of sense. Uh, as we discuss kind of what this is, this absolutism is, and what King Henry, King Henry, King Louis XIV uh, is all about. So first of all, it's important to understand what is actually going on as we get into the 17th century. So we, we have an economy that's not growing fast enough in a lot of ways shrinking, right? So we get a term stagnation, not a, enough goods flowing, being bought and sold something called retrenchment, where we're having less spending, right? Reduction in spending. Both of those, a bad thing, right? Often we see in the U.S. economy over U.S. history, where there's periods where the government will try to interject cash into the economy to get goods flowing, right? And people spending money. Uh, we have climate change issues, which is a term we hear about a lot now, right? It's not the first time that's been around. We have religious divides, which we've spent a lot of time on, the whole Catholic versus Protestant. Uh, we can even go farther, Lutheranism and Calvinism and Huguenots and those groups we talked about. More, All those things, including war for number five, are putting more pressure and tension on governments to respond and handle these crises. And if you just think in general of your history knowledge, when crises arise, does government tend to get smaller or bigger? Well, typically it tends to grow in size, right? Um, and that's what we're going to see, especially with the absolutist side. Uh, side of things. So how do governments respond? Well, in general, it's increase in power, right? They get bigger. Governments tend to grow. The army grows. Well, if your army is going to grow and the size of your government is going to grow, you need to increase your income, right? And that's through the form of taxation. Bureaucracies will grow within these governments, centralized government that have bureaucracies set up to run different parts of the government. Uh, and increased government or state country sovereignty, right? The buck kind of stops there. There's uh, nothing above them. They are making the ultimate decisions on issues and uh, things that come up. So the two things that emerge to kind of deal with these crises of the 17th century, absolutism, which we'll get to in just a second, and then we'll spend a decent chunk of time on down the road, uh, on constitutionalism, especially focusing on England. Uh, and so those are the two, right? And we're probably more familiar through your civics class and stuff with the constitutional side of things from a U.S. perspective, at least. And so what is absolutism? Well, it is what it sounds like, right? It's absolute sovereignty or control in the form of a monarch or a dictator, usually. King Louis the Fourteenth will be one of the really prime examples that we look at. The other one we'll focus on in these little lectures is going to be Peter the Great of Russia. Uh, but the big thing, right, there's no challenge or check on these absolutist rulers in Europe. They make the decision. What they decide is final. End of story, right? There's no checks and balances and separation of powers like we think of in the U.S. system. On the flip side of that, right, a constitutional system, it's a government limited by law. Now, it says usually in the form of a constitution, which is what we have in the U.S., but in places like England, it's going to be based on tradition, uh, certain documents uh, that we'll get into. I'm sure you've talked about like the Magna Carta, et cetera, uh, in civics classes. Every civics timeline in the history of the world starts with the Magna Carta. Uh, and so those documents and traditions will kind of set limits on England's government, as we'll find out after an English civil war at the very least. And so those are our two sides that emerge or two theories and ideas that emerge to deal with these growing crises, absolutism, constitutionalism.